introduction and welcome everybody. This is BMP Weekly episode 199. It is, <laughs> it's close to slides. There we go. <laughs> it is 27th of February 2023, uh, one day from March, which is pretty cool. Um, Today uh, we'll have a visitor uh, from who's well known by many, 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 many people from the SharePoint first, and then Microsoft 365 platform, uh, platform areas, Microsoft 365 areas. All uh, our visitor is Mr. Spencer Harbar. Mr. Spencer Harbar. Now, before we actually talk about that and go to the articles and all of that stuff, let's recap quickly and PMP Weekly. We talk about the latest on Microsoft 365, all um, including related technologies. So we do touch Power Platform here and there. We do touch other technologies, of course. Uh, PMP hashtag, uh, PMP Weekly hashtag in Twitter. If you are there, uh, tag your uh, articles so we know uh, all the awesome stuff that you're covering. Uh, we'll always have a visitor. We'll typically have a visitor in place and then we'll do articles um, and the latest weekly articles on there. Uh, my name is Cesar Yuvonen. I'm a product manager. Again, need to rethink what is my title? Product manager in Microsoft Resist oh, <laughs> platform areas. <laughs> and, my co and our co-host is... Da -da 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 -da. Hey everybody, my name is Valdek Mastegas and I'm cloud developer advocate for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft. You're, you're much better on your title than I am. So. It hasn't changed since uh, since I joined. That, that makes oh, it really fair easy. Point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good point. Now, without the further ado, let's actually jump on the interview with Spencer Harper. Excellent. So, Spence, welcome to the show. Uh, how's life? Well, Nick, he's not moving. What's wrong? <laughs> and thank you, Spence, back in the studio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we had a unfortunate, uh, really last minute cancellation. So we will need to reschedule Spence, uh, Spencer Harper, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, in his natural habitat. Is that the right way of saying that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, Spence, a lot of people probably know Spence from a historical things. If you've been around on Microsoft 365 or in on premises collaboration tooling, uh, he's He's doing a lot of stuff nowadays, and he's also one of the persons organizing the European Collaboration Summit, which is happening on May 21st, 22nd. Uh, let's go to the dates in a second. Now, Spence had a last minute uh, cancellation due to family, uh, unexpected situations within the family, uh, which is almost like too much already <laughs> to share, uh, but it's okay. Uh, we'll get him scheduled on another day. Uh, so these things do happen uh, because it's life um, and, you know, now, what we wanted to do with uh, Waldeck is then to do a quick recap on all of the different awesome conferences which are coming up within the spring. So let's actually have a, a focus on the, the Microsoft 365 conference in Las Vegas, European Collaboration Summit, uh, 365 Educon, and then uh, the community days in overall. Sounds good, Waldeck? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Together with Spence. Yes. <laughs> Spence, any thoughts? Absolutely, <laughs> that's funny. Now, uh, let's actually move then to my screen. <laughs> and let's see if I'm sharing the right screen, not the spin screen. Here we go. <laughs> so, first of all, uh, we have the, if you go think about the spring conference uh, season uh, starting and warming up, uh, of course, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, a bit smaller conferences, um, but we wanted to call out three, uh, which are now happening, and uh, maybe one more actually from the Community Day site in a second. Uh, but first of all, uh, in early May, May 2nd to May 4th, uh, we have the Microsoft 365 conference, which is all about Microsoft Viva, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft SharePoint, and Microsoft Power Platform. Uh, so it's all up, everything what you can do within the Microsoft 365 together with our friends in the Microsoft Platform site. 150 speakers, 150 sessions, workshop, and, and uh, expo area as well. So it's looking super, super, super cool. Um, you haven't been in Vegas in, in, well, in this one, right? Walter? Correct. I, I've been to Vegas for, I'm trying to think if that was still SharePoint conference of it or if that was Ignite already. I think it was SPC. SPC 2014, probably. Was that Venetian? Sorry, what? Venetian? Do you remember uh, the location? No so, actually, no, so actually that was in the MGM. Yeah, then it has to be 2018 uh, Microsoft 365 conference. It was already, or was it? Ah, good point. I can't remember what was the name of the conference. No, I think that was, that was <laughs> earlier. I'm trying to think like what was the thing. So I think that was, there was one. So I've been 
maybe two, even two or three times in Vegas. So one was yep. uh, shortly after we released uh, Surface RT, because I recall I bought one. Cool. That's an awesome <laughs> device. <laughs> Wait, wait! I actually have it um, here. <laughs> another one. Another one was shortly nice. after we released. Uh, that was on premises. That was, I think, in SharePoint 2013. We re re uh, released a bunch of stuff around search. So the ability to um, aggregate uh, content through search. And I did yep. a presentation about using uh, Na Napa. I don't know if you recall that. Yeah. Yes. Browser. So the Studio visual Toast. kind of predecessor to Power Apps. So oh, that, that in yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. So in combination with uh, search to build basically a a um, an, a Windows 8 app uh, that aggregates the content from SharePoint. Cool. So uh, there was that one, and I'm trying to think if there was uh, there was another one. So there was also one where uh, the party was at the 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 NASCAR track. That was 2014 for sure. That was the Venetian or the the. There wasn't a Venetian. There was an MGM. Really? Yeah. No. Yes, it was actually. You're correct. I can't remember the dates anymore. That's a you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. Right? Well, so... I mean, so I'm not sure if there was an MGM. There was like there is the Luxor, and then there was the one next to it. MGM uh, the... I think, is on the other side of the strip. Yeah, that is true. MGM is another side of the Yeah, so there wasn't an MGM, I, but it was like the first one on the uh, on the strip, basically. Uh, I will uh, double check this. Uh, so because uh, why not? Oh, geez, what a gap. <laughs> what was it? The hot no, it's not. It's not the hotel, was it? No. What was its name? Uh, one second, one second. Uh, I'm gonna use. Uh, Maps. Uh, Google Maps, and it is Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay, there you go, there you go, Mandalay Bay, correct, correct. And then there was also another year where we had the party from uh, Bon Jovi, or only John, not the whole band, but on, yep. on, only John. And then there was also one party where it was with um, uh, Huey Lewis. I'm, I'm recalling the events based on the parties. That's that, 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 isn't it? <laughs> what was it? Yeah. Like, what do but I think? It, yeah, we talked about DevOps in SharePoint. Was like, exactly. Uh, or Microsoft 365 or whatever. And, and, and every single hotel pretty much looks just exactly the same. So um, I, the one thing with the MGM is I like the fact that the MGM conference, uh, if you're staying in MGM, you can just easily, you know, it's it's a really convenient location and there's multiple options on staying in MGM as well. So, but. Oh, yeah, I mean, like strip strip in Vegas is really has this really weird thing where, yeah, like you can walk on one side of the strip indoors from I don't know if if the whole end to the other end in, yep. indoors, like you don't need to yep. go out. And yep. someone like there will be a sky, sky bridge, I think that is between uh, New York and Excalibur, I think, if my memory uh, is okay. Uh, but yep. other than that, like you just like, yep. you just go from one place to another for miles indoor. Yep, that's true, and it all it all looks the same pretty much on the on the yes. casino <laughs> floor. Yeah, the, yes, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so uh, on this year, uh, so because so. If you haven't been in Vegas, you want to be in Vegas at least once. If you have been in Vegas, I've been a few times. It's like I'm not getting super excited on the Vegas itself, but okay, meeting people, meeting uh, meeting. Yeah. Uh, community MVPs, other PMs, and, and all of that. That's always really, really cool. Um, this year, uh, there is a lot of, lot of sessions, and there's even more sessions coming up on, uh, on uh, also on uh, from Microsoft, um, which I don't think they're all listed in here yet. And then there's also workshops. Uh, so there's quite a few workshops available where uh, we focus on covering Power Platform, uh, Microsoft Syntax, uh, development, and all of that. So a lot of, lot of uh, really, really cool updates and, and options for people to learn how to take advantage of Microsoft 365. But that's on uh, from actually technically from end of April until the 5th of May, but the actual conference days are 2nd to 4th of May. So this, the workshop dates are until 5th of May. Yes, exactly. So that's, that should be nice. 
Now, the second thing uh, which we're, we're planning to talk about uh, today uh, with Spencer uh, is the European Collaboration Summit, because he's one of the organizers, or he's in the crew organizing the European Collaboration Summit, and it is 10th year anniversary um, of the show. Um, I've been closely involved for past six years, seven years, I don't know, something like wow. that. Uh, Time flies, huh? <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> but it's it's more on helping on on uh, being present and helping the organizers, and it's really well organized uh, and coordinated. So ten years means that they know exactly what they're doing. Um, and uh, the cool thing about the European Collaboration Summit, it's it, it's a non-profit uh, conference. So the idea there is not to actually make money; it's to have friends, have fun with the friends and the community and, and you know, relax. So it is really, really nice. Um, and this price point is quite low, uh, which which is always nice for everybody who's attending. So uh, last time we were there, uh, was, when was it? 2021, December. Uh, it was a bit of a challenging uh, time because there was still a COVID outbreaks and the discussions and there was a late, late uh, last, last and there was actually last night cancellations even on flights when people just didn't show up. Uh, so there was a lot of additional stress because there was just a another outbreak somewhere in middle Europe at the time, which is always a bit of a bummer. I think G G Germany itself had like an outbreak week uh, around the event. Yes, that's true. That is true. It, it was basically, I, I remember having a, well, there was a few of us coming from uh, Finland. Um, and of course, a bit of a sad thing to talk about these things, but I guess everybody has gone through this, so it's it's okay. So I had a long discussion with Laura Kokarinen uh, during the weekend, then there was flights over on Sunday, and she bailed out because there was a, a concerns related on things. Um, so yeah. I did flew it's over, and it's completely understandable. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. It's 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 one of those things where you we need to be careful on on these things as well. So luckily, the situation now looks good for the spring, and, and hopefully all of this is now passed. Um, you never know. Um, it's a great reminder on life has a strange way of surprising us. Um, yeah. You never know what's going to happen. So luckily, to 2021 uh, was was still a nice success. A lot of people um, in present, and we had fun. So and it's always been a really really nice event. This one happens in Düsseldorf. Uh, Düsseldorf is really nice also from a perspective of this big airport and, and all the way around the Europe you can easily fly in. So if you're coming even from US, you can fly to any location in Europe and you'll get a flight directly to Düsseldorf. Makes it super easy. And for you, Waldek, this is really easy. You'll just drive over, right? Well, yeah, so I originally planned to come by train. Yeah, there we go. Because that is like yeah. super convenient, but I might actually carpool with some, someone else. So yeah, still T, 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 B, but I don't need to fly. And you might think like, like why, why not? Like a flight is so short. Well, yes, the flight itself, yes, but everything around it isn't. So end to end, mm -hmm. I'm just as much time lost, not to mention all the, the additional stress of airport security, getting to stuff, bags, yeah. checking in stuff. Like... Yep. None of that on a train or in a car, just put your bag in a car and drive or yep. just step on a train and within two hours you were there. The convenience of internet and everything on board, it's perfect. Yep. Like I would pick train over airplane anytime. Yep, I would as well if that would be an option. We are a bit of an uh -huh. island in Europe <laughs> with Finland. So, and if you don't know what that means, have a look on the yes, have a look on the map, and you'll understand why the Finland is kind of an island, even though it's well, not. I mean, so, they had the same problem. They dug a channel. Like they, they, they did they dug a channel. channel yes, indeed. They fixed yes, it. Yes, indeed. Well, they're yeah, they're apparently working on potentially ducking a channel in from between Helsinki and Tallinn. So, it's yeah, but that would be like the long way around. Well. Not necessarily. It's the well, Ducat channel from and then what? to and then you Stockholm, need to go to... Lithuania, Latvia, all the way down Poland, and Poland, then Poland. Yeah, yep. so th that's like like additional th thousands. Of dollars. <laughs> but hey, you can now take a train. Well, you can always take a tunnel from Helsinki to Dusseldorf, right? So that would be the fastest, you know, yes. direct line. So why don't you <laughs> just go straight, straight down? Exactly. Like, yeah. st so it is now. What is it? Twenty seventh of uh, February. We still have. Exactly. What? You still have two months. Two months. Much, <laughs> how, how long can it take? Like how much work can it exactly. be? Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, so on the European Collaboration Summit, a lot of lot of events, a uh, lot of sorry uh, sessions, and a lot of lot of cool things as well. So 
we do have a uh, here we go uh, tutorials. Uh, for different uh, audiences for Power Platform, Power BI, uh, Microsoft 365 security. Um, if you are a more a business user, there's a uh, there's a nice tutorial for that one as well with Mark Anderson and Emily Mancini. And then of course Microsoft 365 and Teams Development Power Class, and that's that's with a, a lot of our <coughs> MVP crew. Um, and I'll be talking there as an introduction as well. Um, on top of that, there's a massive massive amount of sessions, uh, which is really really cool. Uh, so there's a lot of lot of uh, sessions, lot of lot of different options to learn from the art of possible cross mm -hmm. Microsoft 365 power platform and many many more things so really really cool conference uh, for sure yeah definitely well yeah looking forward actually to be here so just at our first the location is really really good it's really really nice yeah, yeah I think it's, it's it's been a while since I was there I'm trying to see if I am at the picture of the Rancor booth I might have not been I, I don't know from which year it is uh, but yeah, it's been a while click. since uh, I've been there uh, last time. <laughs> yep. Don't click here, please. <laughs> <laughs> and you just had to. And you just of had course. to. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think I've been in, in, in the last one in 2020, I believe. And, yep. and it was a great, great event. 20, maybe not 2020, 2019. I don't think there was an event in 2020. Really? Because 2020 is the pandemic, you know, the year which doesn't oh, exist. Oh, right. Wow. So 2019. Yeah. Four years, four years already. That could, yep. that could have very much be the case. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Now, on top of that, there's the European Collaboration Summit that happens in Dusseldorf in Europe, um, super convenient for them. And then we have the Microsoft 365 or 365 Educon, uh, which is all about Microsoft 365 uh, training conferences as well. And they have three different conferences this year uh, between June and end of August, uh, which is really, really cool. Well, the Seattle one is combined, um, but there's a uh, in June and uh, there's 365 Edicon DC, and there's a lot of lot of cool events and and speakers and plans here as well. So it's a great opportunity for those who probably uh, there's people who might prefer to stay in the US and and be in US conferences because of you know flights and costs related on all of that. But that's a great 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 option as well. There's 70 speaker, 130 sessions, 25 workshops, Pating! so a lot of other stuff. Cool. And then if you're wondering on, hey, wait, so uh, what, are, what are the other options? Of course, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of conferences and events and in-person and hybrid events available. Um, and you can get the list of all of them at the communitydays.org. And this is the one centralized location where we are trying to aggregate all of the events uh, organized by the conference, by the, the community and also by the Microsoft um, uh, employees and a lot of stuff is happening. So that if I go to the events, um, we can actually start seeing a lot all of conferences. Wow. Yeah, so there's a lot of, lot of, lot of them all around the world. Um, it, almost like, of course, every single weekend or week, there's at least once, um, but there's like the mirrors of them. Not all of these all events are around M365 because I can see some of them. Something Correct. like if you go up, workshop day, those metaverse, get yep. CS Dynamics. conference. Yep. Dynamics, yep. yeah. So this is basically Microsoft community, Microsoft Cloud, uh, all up, not just Microsoft 365. So, and if you are an event organizer, please take advantage of getting your event listed in here. Uh, it helps on promoting the event then in the multiple locations. We're using this list also then within our weekly summaries and the internal communications and all of that to educate everybody on the different events which are happening. So if you're doing, if you organize events, please, please, please get it listed in here as well. Uh, we want to help your event be a successful. Cool. Now, let me actually stop sharing. Any thoughts, Spence? <laughs> That's funny. Now, um... <laughs> That's so bad. Uh, now, we did record uh, the intro and the articles uh, before the last minute, uh, the, the unfortunate situation, Spencer couldn't actually make it. So there's going to be an interesting transition <laughs> from this recording. Yeah, we had discussion with the Spence. Next. No, we haven't <laughs> yet. But let's do a quick recap. Any any uh, interesting what's happening this week uh, while they're on your Ooh, table? A there's lot, a lot, a lot. of I, like There is a coincidence, like stars aligned. 
So tomorrow we've got a new release of CLI for Microsoft 365. And it was interesting thing. The other day we had a recap with the team. Uh, February has 20, 28 days. Yep. I think we shipped this month like 29 commands, new commands. Like one command cool. every day. It's like that's insane amount of work. I don't think that we've ever been as active as we are now. It's just great yep. to see everybody's energy and uh amount of work that we get from people all over the place helping us out working with us to improve cli for everybody else so this is so 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 cool to see so that is one two we're releasing a new version of microsoft graph developer proxy d tool to make untestable testable allowing you to simulate the elusive api errors like throttling server errors and all of that and help you ensure that you deploy your apps in production with um, uh, confidence. Yep. Right? So we've got a few improvements there and we're laying some foundational work for some new cool things to come. Uh, to, so stay stay tuned for that. Uh, so that is two, three on Wednesday, March 1, the hackathon. We talked about it already a bit. So that is another thing like combination of a lot of work being done first for preps and now we are going live. So we are excited to see how many folks will join and most importantly, what kind of cool things they will build. Like we yep. shared some ideas that we have, like what are the, the common things you would do with Microsoft Graph, but I'm sure like people will get creative and the moment it will click, it was like, oh, we can do this. And then they would just go. So I'm really excited to uh, see like what cool things people will build. And yep. then finally, and some of those we're planning to do in the community demos as community calls as well. Definitely, so. definitely, right? So we will definitely try to highlight these to show basically everybody like what cool things you can build. Yep. Um, and then another thing, one more thing I just learned just before we di we did the recording now is that apparently there'll be a new preview release of Microsoft Graph Toolkit this week too. Cool. So version three with new things, new updates. Um, Stay tuned for more info. Cool. Uh, what's on your plate? Uh, <laughs> oh, a lot of a lot of uh, random. Uh, I've I've got to be honest with you. To be honest, I did. I I have so much small things uh, which I need to take care of. Um, that it's a lot of this kind of a uh, chaos managing the chaos. And then of course SPFX 1.17 went pre preview last week. We talked about that one in the articles, which we're going to cover uh, after this um, because we shuffle the things uh, so um, and getting all of that ready and uh, we'll probably have one or two more preview releases 1.17 with new capabilities and features before the GA is coming out on the end of uh, March. Uh, there's a lot of videos which I need to do some production um, and finalizing and popsing and scheduling and social media promotional things uh, so that's that's all getting done this week as well. I don't, we, we're not well there's a kind of a positive problem we have too much material which we just need to start you know, scheduling to push out yeah. um, on what community has done, what the PMs have done, what people have done, which is great because it's better to have almost like too much videos than no content because there's so yeah. much happening around the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform areas. And and yeah. I think the one of the key challenges that we keep on having is that how do we help our customers and, and partners to stay up to date with yeah. all of the new possibilities and um, so yeah. try to try to figure out how do we do that. Again, better to communicate almost too much than not at all. So I think in the end, you know, it would almost require you to have like a centralized dashboard with tags and you can basically pick, I am interested in this and I am not yes. interested in that. And that yeah, basically allows you to, allows us to keep the pace, keep shipping and announcing, discussing, presenting new things. And people can then choose themselves what they are interested in. Yep. And basically they get announcement about that and don't get announcements out, 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 um, um, about some other things. Because otherwise yep. it's really hard, right? Because like when you get all the announcements, everything that we share, I can imagine you might get overwhelmed unless you yep. travel to work. Maybe be, you commute and you have like one or two hours a day spare where you yep. commute and you want to tune out and tune in into things that we do, which is perfect. Like if, if you yep. can do that and you are interested in that, perfectly fine. But I can imagine many folks don't. Like I'm yep. working at home. I've been working at home for the last four or five years. My travel work distance is like a floor up and down. Yep. I don't Meaning even do that I, because I'm on yeah, one floor. Well, so. 
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, like you have this whole west wing, east wing thing. So, <laughs> like south there you and, go. Yeah, south oh, and west. There you so. go. Yeah, <laughs> south by southwest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that went south. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> right, but I mean, like, yeah, it's so I, I don't with with that. It's it takes like for my part deliberate action to stay tuned into the yep. uh, the recent updates because I just yeah I. Like when I work at work and when I'm done with work, I am done with work. So I don't have the yeah. kind of time when I'm forced not to work, but I cannot also do anything else like being in a car. True, true. And, and of course, we do have the message center for the some of the new features. But again, if you're a developer and if you are, then the, the landscape is much bigger because from a developer perspective, it's not just the new features. It's also the APIs, also the Azure integration points, the opportunities there, all of that stuff. And the guidance are rolling out new samples. The GitHub is full of new stuff. And it's like, ah, oh, so much to do. And it would be, like I said, it would be really nice to have a centralized pipeline for all of the new features. And that's something which we probably should start working on at some point um, as a Microsoft, in Microsoft 365 areas, trying to figure out how do we do that. Uh, of course, our internal organization structure isn't really optimized for that kind of communications, unfortunately, and that's mm -hmm. causing a bit of a challenge always, but let's see. Well, I mean, at let's the end see. of the day, like, it doesn't that's a bad really excuse. hard, right? Like imagine like everywhere where we, uh we get stuff out, have an RSS feed, and then it only comes down to True. the right tags, and you bring few feeds into one, and yep. that's your dashboard. One unified centralized feed, absolutely, 100%. Absolutely makes sense. Cool, that's build, a great idea. Just make it happen. Build, Come on. It. Yeah. Come yeah. on, Valdek. Yeah. <laughs> How long would it take, right? I mean, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, if you if you can do, do a channel from Helsinki to Dusseldorf in less than two months, come on. So, Wait a minute. So while digging the channel, why not build the thing as well? Yeah, that's true. Actually, yes, two you, two birds and one not, not two like flies. Not, not two two birds, things, right? Two flies on a one hit, not two birds. You don't hit birds. Don't hit two birds. Two birds with one stone. Don't don't it's the original don't thing. hit birds. It's proverbs. It's figure of speech you don't really know animals were, were harmed during the yes. recording of this don't show. harm animals absolutely anyway let's jump on the on the weekly articles uh thank you spence on this one in the last thoughts <laughs> he's, he's funny now uh let's jump on the <laughs> let's jump on the on the weekly articles and we'll get spence and uh, definitely scheduled for the show uh for upcoming weeks but let's see uh, let's see when uh, we will um, announce that as the time is right. But thanks everybody for this one. Let's jump to the weekly articles. Excellent. Thank you, Spencer, uh, on the on the really good discussion as well, um, and and really good to catch up. Uh, it's been again a while, and again, good, what, looking forward on on actually seeing you in in person um, in Dusseldorf. That's the location. Yes, it is. Yes, in ECS. What was the location? What was the city? Somewhere in Europe, you know. It's not a <laughs> Europe is such a small thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, uh, Dusseldorf in May, hopefully. We will see other people there as well. We, we are seeing actually, well, I, I have a small insights on the registration numbers and they're looking actually really, really awesome. So awesome to see the interest um, on, on having these in-person events, So which is awesome. Matt, let's actually then jump on the weekly articles, right, Waldek? Let's do that. Excellent. What's in the news? What's in the news? What has happened? So let's first start with the Microsoft uh, blocks and what's happening on there. Uh, there was, well, some of the blocks are pretty quiet. Uh, it's, it's been a quiet time. But in the Microsoft Viva block, uh, there was answers in Viva understanding time saved and people helped. And this really comes back on the answers features in Viva Engage and then how it actually provides analytics on the, the value and the savings, what, what the company has been done without, with the tooling. And I, in general, this is really, really good, and every single product should have some sort of a statistics and analytics on, hey, this is how much time you save because time is money, right? So you really know, cool what, to have what this other thing, what, what other thing a product should have? What other things? Uh, good features. An API. An API. An API. <laughs> 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 that, is, that is one thing that we're being asked time and again for every single that's thing. We'll be like, yeah, that's cool, but does it have an API? Because that's really a critical true. thing. Like, as cool true. as it is for us to offer features that address 
80%, 90% of the need, yep. there's always this niche that, hey, but I'd like to do X. And we yep. cannot cater to all of that. It just doesn't scale because there's this long tail of needs. Having an API is perfect for that because we say, hey, we've got this cool thing. You don't need to build it. It just works. And then for yep. everything else, here is an API. If you That's need something you more, can extend that. Exactly. exactly. Be my guest. So not unplugging customers and partners, uh, uh, enabling them to do more uh, with APIs. That's always good. Thing. Exactly. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. Anyway, uh, let's go to the second article. And this one was simplifying change management of Microsoft 365. Um, quite interesting as well. So first of all, for those who are not uh, familiar with this, we do have the message center in the tenant uh, admin UX. Super important actually to stay up to date on what's happening within a tenant and what are the new features which are coming out. So uh, the message center show with Daniel and Daryl uh, is a good example of the, the, that they cover what's in here and then elaborate a bit on the messaging because some of the the, the text in, in the message center might be a bit confusing. And it's always good to know that, okay, that's what it actually means. So Dr. Daniel and Daryl are doing that on a weekly basis as well. But now we are introducing additional updates, additional scenarios, additional features um, in the message center and to make it even easier for administrators to stay up to date on what's happening. And just to re reformat that, it's not just for administrators. So this is the location to understand what's rolling out. So it would be good for every single customer to have some sort of a process that even though it's administrator who goes here and sees the things, that information is then shared internally with business users and owners and product owners and all of that. Yes. And then for the larger larger audience. Uh, so let's try to think that in a more broader way. Yeah. Because administrators are typically not the product owners of Microsoft 365 in an enterprise company. So cool. Then we had a new article uh, from uh, Swapna Ninan on the Graph yeah, APIs. New capabilities available in Microsoft Graph to do APIs. So there are two things that we make available now. Uh, something that one thing which you've asked for a long time, having app only access to things in to, to do. So now it is available. If you have like um, unmanaged or unmanaged, um, non-interactive app, like a daemon process or something like a job going in the background. Now, you don't need to use a service account without MFA and all that. You can just use app-only access to safely access the content into to, to do. Yep. And another part is having access to attachments. So if you have a task and there's anything attached to it, whether it's image, uh, file, anything else, you can get that through the API too. So if you yep are using to do APIs, this is a great next step for you to be able to do more. Absolutely, and, and a key point on the application permissions, it's not only for reading, it's also creating. So you can now easily integrate the tasks which you might have from Migration other LLP system. Even. Right, exactly. like moving from some other place to Microsoft Ex to do. Exactly, exactly, so you can easily do that. Uh, so super, super cool, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome improvements. Da -da -da. Then apparently I've written something which Who I have a bad guy? memory. <laughs> 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 but uh, last week we had actually two big um, points uh, related on SharePoint framework. Uh, I will actually do a teaser and jump in here. Uh, first of all, we had uh, the sixth year anniversary on, on the general availability of SharePoint framework, which is really, really cool. And it's still growing. The usage is growing, which is amazing. It's really basically validates the, the implementation style and the engagement model, what we've been having at SPFX, um, because well, it's still growing. It, the numbers are out of this world. Six years, and uh, seven years since it actually kind of existed, because I remember our first preview and the beta one dev kitchen uh, under NDA was in January 2016. You were quite a way there, Walter, if I remember. No, you were in a second. Was you were in Yeah, yes, yes, in Belgium, true. yeah. That is true. Oh, that is true. good times, good memories. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. Quite a few years ago, uh, but it's 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 yeah, it's really really cool. Um, now the second thing which we did was that we announced on the same day actually uh, a first preview version of 1.17, uh, and this is kind of a baseline release. Yet we don't have that much new features mentioned in the blog post, uh, but we'll add a few more additional details, and then uh, as we move longer closer to the end of March, uh, there's going to be a GA hopefully in the end of March, not in or maybe in early April of 1.17 with new capabilities and of course, a lot of bug fixes and improvements based on the, the issues which have been reported, all being listed in the release notes at the documentation. So 
really, really cool to have this one available as well. And there's, there's the list of issues which have been addressed in 1.7. Nice, nice. Good. Then we have something really cool where you are closely involved starting this week as well. Exactly, right? So as you are watching this, hopefully on Tuesday, February 28th, tomorrow, on Wednesday, March 1st. 2023. We... <laughs> yes. Well, who knows? Maybe in 2024, we will have exactly the same thing. Yeah, that is who true. Knows? That's true. Um, anyway, so on March 1st, we're going to start 15 days long virtual online hackathon around .NET and Microsoft Graph. It's a cool time and place for you to learn about how you would use .NET and Microsoft Graph in your apps for school, for work, personal apps. What's also even cool, we will have great lineup of folks What's even cooler prizes because there is no hackathon without cool things that we are planning to give away to the winners. So yep. if you have an idea and any app is good enough, as long as it uses .NET and Microsoft Grab, you are eligible for a prize. So go to aka.ms slash hack dash together, sign up and we will see you on March 1 and looking forward to seeing what hacks you will build. It yeah, sounds really good and, and awesome to see this one finally alive uh, because we've, you've been prepping this for a long time. Yes, so. <laughs> yes. Like on the outside, it's like, yeah, we're doing an event. And then, and then internally, like to get all of it done, it's a yep. lot of work to really organize events. So like I got a lot of respect for folks who organized events in the past. Now I got to experience like how much work it actually is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's surprising a lot of work, <laughs> absolutely, and coordinating things and making sure that everybody is truly committed and understand their expectations and all of that stuff. It, it's a lot. A line, even coordinate. though you're doing that in a team, yep. it's still a lot of work. <laughs> yep, absolutely, 100%. Now, uh, on the Power Platform side, uh, Power Platform Automate Desktop Flows, uh, I have Power Automate Desktop Flows in Dataverse updates. So basically, there's updates on the Dataverse side Power Automate Desktop. Uh, so there's an update uh, from last week related on that. Uh, new features scrolling out um, and new changes, which are basically impacting the existing flows. So from a version one to version two, all, all of that. So now we're, that's always the version is so hard when it starts. We sooner or later at some point of the product cycle. Thing, naming things. <laughs> exactly. on Earth. Authentication, authorization. Oh, yes, <laughs> DNS, regular <laughs> expressions, yes. like, like times and time, time zones. Yes. I just cannot wrap my head around this. Exactly. Move to North Pole or South Pole. No time zones. You're in no every time single zone, time yes. zone at the same time. So. Yep. Now, uh, on the Power Automate side, uh, there was a February 2023 update on Power Automate for desktop. Um, I love the, the frequent or the reliability of having the, like, a monthly summary on all of the updates. And again, awesome to have new features capable available. And even though it wouldn't be much, but like, you know, we will yes. always release the monthly update and these are the new things. So it's easy to follow up on them afterwards. This one I've already talked about. So happy anniversary for SharePoint Framework. And Ooh. then uh, there was something interesting related on GitHub. What is this exactly. all about? Code Spaces. A beginner's, beginner's Guide to Learning to Code with GitHub Code Spaces. You might have heard a name, but if you didn't have a chance to give it a try, this article gives you like cool overview and takes you from really zero to a hero in using code space, right? Because like, what are the typical things where you try to join new project or do something open source? Well, you need to set up your dev environment, or at least you had to in the past. With code spaces, that is now a thing of a past. How, how it works? Check out the article. Yeah, it's it's actually really, 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 really cool. Uh, it's a promise of the, let's say, decades that you no longer need to have a super powerful computer on your usage. You just connected the to, to remotely well, cloud hosted thing. The thing. usage is warm, so. but also like all the dependencies. And like, yes. you need to have Node, and you need to have packages, and you yeah. need this, and yeah. you need that. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to spend two hours to do just this one, yeah. one fix. And every single time you open up a Visual Studio code, Visual Studio, it tells you that you need to update that. And every single time you do that, <laughs> <laughs> you're not using it enough. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> now, Marcus Miller from Emanate had a great article related on PDF document conversion in Microsoft Teams tab with Microsoft Graph and Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. Uh, and this is the Visual Studio, not Visual Studio code, but Visual Studio really looking into uh, how to get started on using that, granting the permissions and, and doing the transformation to PDF documents and single sign-on and all of, all of how that actually works. So thank you, Marcus. These are really, really, really powerful blog posts I'm showing the baseline and features and capabilities and how to get started. So really good. Then we had a uh, two articles uh, from uh, Sutharton related yes, on PMP about, React Control Series. Exactly. PMP React Controls Part 15. So he's going through all controls available, and apparently there are quite a few of them. And yes. in this article, he talks about the site picker. So whenever you build an app that uh, has the need to let users select a site, you don't need to build any of that. There's a, a control available for you to use within SPFX, right? That is yep. SPFX. Well, exactly. it's a it's the, the open source controls for SPFX. Yes, that is correct. Exactly. Yes. So it is an SPFX. So it takes the content. You don't need to do any of you don't need to do you just add that to your app and users can now select sites from their correct. Their, correct. their tenant. Absolutely, they are context aware uh, controls, which is really, really cool. And the part 16 uh, came out one day later, so he's been there really you busy. Go. Field collection <laughs> data is just going one by one. But it's <laughs> yes. really great to show, not just you know offer a list of stuff, but also show like, how would you use them in practice? Like what kind of code is needed? So simple for uh, use case and a yep. video or a GIF that shows like, how does that work? Because that makes it really easy. Like, oh, that one. Gotcha. Yep. Exactly. Right. Exactly. This one is a really, really, really cool control. By the way, it gives you this collection manage All of them collection cool. of. All of them. Yeah, cool. they are. They are. Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. Anyway, uh, so let's move forward. Uh, Martin Links today uh, had a new blog post on working with purview event-based retention using code, and that sounds really, really, really interesting. What is purview? What is purview? It's all about content retention, content policy, and discovery. So it's all about, um, I don't know, what is the overall records management? Compliance, that, that uh, yeah, kind of yeah. Topic or, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, so it, it's all about that, right? Absolutely. And, and that is a product that, that would, and, 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 and we offer basically to help you manage records in your org. Yep, absolutely. Really, really cool. Um, and there's so much new stuff in here as well. Um, oh, yeah. So we used to have the record center, uh, <laughs> but Way now it's in a when. completely new level. So yeah. So, so if you know that, this isn't it. Yes, <laughs> that's true. That is true. Now, Stefan Bauer had a new blog post. He's he's such a wizard. Uh, I know Stefan is up to the level of of people to you know. He's so good at this stuff. Uh, it's just amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's like if you would ask me way back when, like, can you have like 400 level talk on CSS? Like CSS? I mean, yes. <laughs> like we all know, no, like putting a div in the middle of a page is really hard. Yeah. But then you learn about things like that, and you see things like 3D animations, and you're like, oh my god, I know nothing. I'm like level one. Exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Matt, uh, Stefan's article really focuses on updating how to include third-party CSS in your SharePoint framework. There are some changes on this uh, in the new, latest versions of SharePoint framework, and he talks about those options and changes. Um, he works on that stuff on the day-to-day -day basis, but the level of a understanding how this works, just yeah, every single time I'm talking yeah. with Stefan about this stuff, I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying, but you that's really cool. There you go. Today <laughs> exactly. I learned. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, uh, Wonder Laura, 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 Laura Rogers had a new article as well. Um, yes, list choice column other with power reps, right? So typically, when you build an app and you offer a, a set of options, you might want to have this thing other. And then when you have it, like there's a, a textbook that allows you to type the other thing. Yeah. How you would do that in power reps? Well, Laura's article shows you exactly that. Yep, really, really cool. Thank you from Laura for that one. Uh, then we had an article from Peter Venstra relating calculate progress of tasks in SharePoint using Power Automate. Calculate progress of tasks in SharePoint using Power Automate. So basically connecting uh, the task list, uh, which are in SharePoint, which you can, of course, still use and not just use to-do list and, and, and planner, um, and then calculating the status and calculating information using then Power Automate. Uh, really, really cool scenario. So like 
yep. showcasing the scenario and then this is how I implemented that. These are super beneficial yep. for the ecosystem. Now, Laura had a new article. It's been a while from her site, yeah. which says her articles are always so awesome. So we were waiting for every single day to have something new. Yeah. So. Is there anything new? F5, F5. Yes, there is. <laughs> yes. How to use TNP PowerShell on Azure Functions with app-only access. And this is a key scenario, fundamental yes. thing. You use functions to have a daily job or weekly or well. Or, everything you want to do and you want to do it in PowerShell because it's a very convenient way to write a script and script that you can run locally and then you want to run this in a cloud so you, that you can close the laptop's lid and go back home right so this is a super convenient popular common case how do you go about it well now we have a step-by-step -step description that takes you directly yep. through that how do you use pnp powershell in azure functions with app only access Absolutely, really, really cool stuff. And and this really comes also back on uh, on the fact that there's some compatibility issues related on the versions. Um, and this comes back on Azure going forward and going backwards and the default settings. And, and but um, she provides then a, a options of uh, downgrading and how do you adjust the things and settings to yeah. make things work. So really, really cool. In her words, how do you get it to work? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, Eric story, Overfield. Really short. How do you get it to work? <laughs> Yes, Eric Coverfield, Overfield had awesome news uh, last week related on uh, SharePoint Static Kit, and there's a new version 3 out, which is all updated to use uh, SharePoint Framework 1.16.1 and to use Craft Toolkit 2.9, which is the latest version there. Uh, SharePoint uh, Static Kit is basically, and let me show this, this is actually something really cool. We work together with numerous, numerous MVPs and other people um, on showcasing how would you build a custom portals with custom experiences some of this stuff is now more well there's more and more of some of, uh, English English reset now some of this <laughs> some of the extensibility shown here are nowadays available out of the box um, but it's the whole point is to showcasing what is how to build web parts and experiences and customization custom menus and footers and all of that in a comprehensive solution and sample. package and the plan and package and exactly end to end experience right exactly so thank you eric on working on the v3 on this one uh we'll get English is so hard. We will get you scheduled uh, for sure for a community call demo related on uh, the updates in here as well, because it is really, really cool to see uh, this one getting updated on the latest version. So many web parts, so many features, so many capabilities which are available uh, from this sample. Good, good. Uh, Elio had an update related on SPFX, uh, BMV SPFX controls coming back on Suit Hartson's blog post. Uh, so these are the ones which you can track and drop in place and, and they just do magically context aware capabilities and features and connectivity, uh, which is really, really cool. So using either Craft or SharePoint REST APIs behind of the scenes. And there's two versions of them, the React controls and then property controls. Both have a new version available. Thank you, Elio, on that. Uh, Adam had an update on his uh, Microsoft VS Code extensions. Uh, what are these? Well, like, what, what, what? From Microsoft 365 VS Code extension release 2.2.4. So these extensions are meant to help you uh, use CLI from Microsoft 365 in scripts and other things. So things like, you know, IntelliSense and getting uh, feedback when you write scripts and so forth and so on. So these are really great way to, if you use CLI in that way and you use VS Code as your editor for scripts, you need to have this extension, right? And, yep. and he has also another one for PowerShell, right? Yep. So MP basically yep. get completion for, for, for commands and commandlets so that you can you don't need to, you know, look up all the time having one pane docs and then the other one yep. script and switch back and forth. Like, no, get all of that in context in VS Code. These are really, really yep. cool. Really, really cool. Thank you, Adam, on that one. Now, on the YouTube video side, uh, I just, um, one day. Wow, this is You're hard. too fast. Slow down. YouTube video side. Uh, Shane Young had a new video related on ChatGPT versus Bing Chat. Power apps help compared. So, so basically comparing. Well, um, Bing Chat is basically an advanced version of ChatGPT, but then comparing the different options and what's available and how do they actually work in the context of Power Automate. Really, really cool video and and showcasing the answers and questions and how things are actually working um, and what we can ask and what kind of information we're getting out of it. Can you tell me about the video Power Apps Filter Gallery dropped by 
you just linked and and you can actually get a summary on the on the video it's actually pretty cool so yeah a lot of lot of cool uh, information there uh paulo had a new video as well Yes, about creating planner plans via Microsoft Graph. So a while back, we've extended uh, Planner API uh, on Microsoft Graph, again, with App Only Access, something that's been asked for a long, long, long time. So now yeah. you will see how, how you can use that API in practice for creating plans, buckets, and tasks in Planner using the Microsoft Graph. That's really, really cool. Thank you, Paolo, on that one. And then the final video is from Juliana De Luca uh, related on how to use the new Microsoft Viva Connection desktop. Um, that, well, it's actually called Microsoft Viva Connection Home or, but, you know, terminology is always confusing. <laughs> but it's basically this new home experience uh, which we're rolling out, um, which is mainly impacting the desktop experience of Microsoft Viva Connection because the mobile experience was already looking more like this uh, aligned on this one. Um, but he's talking about how to how to start using that, what is the experience, how to modify that, what are the different options and all that. So really, really cool. Thank you, Juliana Luca, on that one. That's it for now, uh, I guess. Stop sharing. There we go. Uh, we went already through what's happening within this week with spends. Uh, anything else what you want to talk about? Craft, hackathon, participate on that one. Super, Definitely. super cool. Definitely. So that's uh, that's so one, two, try new versions of CLI for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy. They are out this week. And test out SPFX 1.17 and let us know if yes. you find any issues. So that's really if you have an opportunity of do that. Um, the, we do. Uh, Acknowledge, of course, that the preview and beta stuff is, is nowadays it's much, much harder to actually get time to test out things. So there's so many things rolling out all the time, but it's super important. There's at least an option to test out things yeah. uh, before exactly. they are and released. There's also a great, great reminder for us to extend CLI from Microsoft 365 with the ability to update that so that you, yes. if you have an hour of time available, you can spend on the upgrade a, a minute or two and then spend the rest of the time testing as opposed to yep. you spend the time to upgrade the project and then the time is gone and by the time you're ready you're like yeah the time is gone i cannot i don't have yes. time to do anything else yeah. so we try to so. simplify that that uh, that a little and that is not yet available yep. in the version out this week but we'll try to get it in as soon as we can that really reminds me i don't i don't play that much but i do have my xbox on the on the shelf there and i have that the, the thing in here every single time i open up the xbox like okay fine i'll, I'll just I'll I'll do something and play whatever game and it's like yeah we need to update that. How much? You gotta be more intentional gigabytes. about it. You gotta <laughs> yes. be more intentional about it. like plan it. Put it in the calendar for the next week. <laughs> yes. Like block hour. I'm gonna play here. Run the updates already now so that then yep. you'll be like game on. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Almost the same thing. Um. But it's it's yeah. Uh, updates are rolling out all the time also in the software. So it's it's kind of a well same challenge. Cool. Anyway, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, please use the BMP hashtag, uh, BMP Weekly hashtag. I will, am I saying that correctly? Yes, I'm. BMP Weekly hashtag in the Twitter. Um, actually, you can use that hashtag also in LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn doesn't. Uh, the hashtags do work there as well. So we will know what's available and what are the cool things what you're creating and building. Um, it helps us on on actually then surfacing your stuff uh, in the show. Other than that, please give us feedback input suggestions all more than welcome uh, related on the work we do exactly and next week is going to be show number 200 we're at least true. me i'm curious to see what we will what our host because we won't be host we'll be guests i guess yes that's yes, the idea that's, i guess we need so to what our yeah. <laughs> host will going to prep for us yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, cool to have that number achieved. So that's 200 shows. So really, yeah, really cool. Okay, and then next up is 300. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, <laughs> that's how it. That that's how the math Even works. A year and a half, <laughs> <laughs> or two years, or however long yes. it takes. Absolutely. But thanks everybody for watching, and thank you for the feedback. And keep let us know how we do. Cheers, everybody. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye.